<laughs> I'm sitting between, I think, the two most employed people in NFL media. Radio shows, TV shows. No, but I mean, what's it like for both of you guys? Once you leave the game, uh, you realize, all right, I got to bust my ass and work just as hard in my new craft. So, like, every opportunity is like me being a rookie again. And when I was a rookie, I walked in to the Minnesota Vikings and I'm seeing Dante Culpepper in a Theisman fur, and I'm seeing Randy Moss swagged out with a baggy suit, and I'm like, <laughs> damn, this is the NFL. These dudes pulling up in Bentleys with spinners on yeah. it. And I'm like, in I'm Minnesota. a baby. I'm a baby, and I got to work not only to make a name for myself, but to, like, get these guys' attention. And that was my goal, to get the greats' attention. So, like, what we do now is – if we got to work one, two, three, four jobs, we want to get attention of the masses because we're still working. Like I do want to jump off of something you said a few minutes ago. Randy Moss? Yeah. I was going to say you experienced Please. young Randy Moss. Right. You experienced old Randy Moss. Right. The first time I met Randy Moss, I knew immediately that um, if I got a attaboy pat on the back from him, I've arrived as a wide receiver. Uh. Um, but I went about it the wrong way because I, I was trying to get his attention like, a thirsty dude at the end of the night. Like, I was like, all right, as soon as I hit him with this icebreaker, we're going to be best friends forever, <laughs> man. Yeah. And I remember one day I was, I was getting ready for practice, and uh, I think it was Jermaine Dupri. Had, he had a music video, and he was wearing the Marshall 88 jersey. So I'm, like, in my little dorm room at training camp. I was like, this is it, man. And I remember us doing conditioning, and I'm standing next to him, and I'm literally, like, gassing myself up like a dude about to walk across the bar and ask a girl for the number. I was like, all right, man, come on, don't blow it, don't blow it. I was like, hey, uh, Randy. Um, voice was cracking. Oh, yeah. What was going on? I'm a grown man. And I was like, did you see the uh, Jermaine Dupree video? You had your jersey on, man. And he's running next to me. He looks at me. He just keeps on running. I was crushed. Oh. I was like, oh. Listen, I wrote a girl a note, do you like me, yes or no, in the fifth grade. And she crumbled it up and threw it at my face. Oh, man. Randy Moss <laughs> hurt me more. Like, my feelings were crushed. And I was like, damn, I blew it. And then what's crazy is, like, once I started making plays, like, that's when he came and was like, mm. all right, like, I know you love the game and I know you're mm. one of the good ones. It's funny, I think, to hear him say that because I don't think people always realize that football players can also be fanboys. First time Randy Moss came on the plane, I was row 27 by the window, and he said, can I sit here? I was like, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> you can sit here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, that's the way I felt. But the like Nate's saying, too, the one thing I learned from him in a hurry is his perspective on the game mm. was like amazing. He could almost see the game almost like a quarterback. He yeah. understood offense and defense. And, you know, he understood when this play was stupid and he wasn't going to tell the coach, that's a stupid play, Sims. That's, you know, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I mean, and I just, uh, I really enjoyed being around him. Calvin is the forgotten guy. Yeah. If I'm creating a player in Madden, he's 6'5, running a 4'3, and his name is Calvin Johnson. Yeah. But he's never mentioned in the Jerry Rice, T.O., Randy Moss top three. But I would argue he's physically as gifted as any of them, if not more. No question. I mean, it's the same individual that broke Jerry Rice's single-season record. Yeah. And I watched him do right. it. I watched games where he'll put up a buck 90, and we go to the meeting, and after a loss, Sean Jefferson, who's a former player, wide receiver, he was our wide receiver's coach. He'd say, Calvin, I need you to do more. And, and, you know, I'm thinking, like, damn, what you want to do, go for 250? Yeah. And Calvin wouldn't say anything. Right. He was quiet. You know, his mother, uh, a doctor, daddy, worked on the railroad, so he had this blend of blue collar and high IQ, and that was his approach to life. And he would just nod his head say, all right, coach, next game, go put up 300. Now, Randy was just pure speed encapsulated. If they put shoulder pads and cleats on Usain Bolt, and he was actually a good football player that can catch and track the ball like no other, yeah. it would be Randy Moss. Yeah. And Randy Moss had the greatest late hands ever. Even though coaches say, don't panic, remember your cues, don't give anything away, like we panic. Like we don't remember our cues and we give everything away. Like <laughs> when the ball's in the air, you start hearing your own breath and you go from <laughs> And if you're a really good DB, I know it's a small detail, but you can hear a guy breathing hard and then you see his eyes go from here to here, yes. and that right there is a cue that something's coming. Right. Right. Randy would like, look, and the ball would be coming, and his face doesn't move, his hands doesn't move, his breath doesn't move, and then right when it gets to him, he's like, Velcro. Like, that's something that you might not see ever. No. Right. Um, so. And that's not something you coach. It's this something that God said, hey, Randy, I got a little extra for you. Right. Feed the man. That was awesome.